So you want to make it big in the speaking industry. Where do you get the best information, the best advice from those who have succeeded before? Join my dear friend James Malinchek as he gets real with some secrets to success in the speaking industry. Cue the intro. Welcome to The Real Deal, where we get real about what it takes to succeed. Whether it's wealth, health, relationships, or finding your purpose, we talk to the masters to uncover the secrets to defying the odds and creating your own rock star legacy. I'm Doug, and after working on multiple Grammy-winning records as an author, transformational speaker, and your personal translightenment coach, I'm committed to your growth and success. And now, here's the real deal. All right, so are you ready? Fire up, brother. I'm ready to do it. Your lead. All right. <laughs> so uh, first, um, I do need to honor our sponsor, and uh, I have been endorsing guidedhypnotic.com. That's guidedhypnotic.com. Uh, but now, due to all of what's happening and what perfect timing, one of the best speakers here on the planet, I have launched a speaking training called urockspeaking.com. And it's to help speakers, authors, coaches master the art of online virtual presenting for everything from the technology to mastering your message and engaging virtually in groups and beyond. So with that being said, though, are you ready for the best introduction you've had today? Oh, my gosh. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's the only one. So there's nowhere to go. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Well, here we go. James Malinchek is a recognized as one of the most requested in demand business and motivational keynote speakers and marketing consultants in the world. He was featured on the hit ABC TV show Secret Millionaire and was twice named National College Speaker of the Year. James has delivered over 3,000 presentations for corporations, associations, business groups, colleges, universities, and youth organizations worldwide. James can speak for groups ranging from 20 to 30,000 and more. Giving back is a part of James' life and has raised over $1 million for various charities and organizations and has donated thousands of dollars of his own money to help others. As a speak, uh, speaker, marketing coach, and consultant, James is the behind-the-scenes go-to marketing advisor for many top speakers, authors, thought leaders, business professionals, celebrities, sports coaches, athletes, and entrepreneurs, and is recognized as the world's number one big money speaker, trainer, and coach. And we will, of course, you go to bigmoneyspeaker.com. You've got tons of info, free trainings and the like. What's going on, my brother? Thank you so much for sharing your most valuable asset, your time and your wisdom. So thank you in advance and, uh, and presently. Oh, absolutely, brother. Anything for you. I appreciate you and all the great stuff you're doing. I'm, I'm blessed you asked me on. So thanks for having me. Uh, dude, thank you. I, I, I got to tell you, I, the, the, I've known of you. We have a lot of mutual friends, um, but I did take advantage of an opportunity that I, you know, was so blessed to be part of is you held a mastermind at your, your private residence and had, uh, it was about 15, 20 people there. And I, I got to tell you, it like, it, it was amazing. Your, your ability to just share such incredible information in such a short period of time to, to this group was incredible. And I learned so much and I look forward to doing more with you. Um, oh, thanks brother. Appreciate that. Very nice of you. Uh, of course. So like, do it, like I'm just putting it out there. If you put that <laughs> offer that up again and someone does not take advantage of that opportunity, they are crazy. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> I know. Uh, no, so, I just, uh, I just love, uh, I'm, I'm very blessed and God's been great to me. And, uh, it's a, it's a great blessing to now be in a phase of my life where I'm trying to teach as much and give back. And I never thought I'd be doing what I'm doing. I just, I never, I remember saying when I got out of college, man, if I could just make 2000 bucks a month, I'll be happy and set for life. <laughs> so. Wow. Uh, so well, yeah, let, let's get into this. Um, how did you get into then speaking? If you were just thinking that uh, big jump to where you're doing now. So how did that happen? Yeah. So I never planned on speaking. I never woke up one day and said, I'm going to go be a speaker that changes life. I didn't even know the speaking world or industry existed. I had no clue. 
So um, I actually started writing a book in college for kids in college. And the book was called, it came out to be From College to the Real World. And it was all about my journey, how I went from college being an average everyday C student. And you know what a C student is, right? C your way through school, yeah. right? <laughs> that was me. So I, um, but I, I beat out 70 some candidates to land this, what I call my dream job coming out of college. And I thought, man, when I was in school, walking to the movie theater one day, I just thought, man, there needs to be a book like this for people like me, the average everyday C student who has a big dream, has a desire to do something cool in their life, but then everybody tells them they can't do it, right? Because right. they didn't get the best grades or they weren't the president of every organization on campus, et cetera. So I don't know why I said this, Doug, but I just said, I'm going to write the book on it. I mean, I never even read a book in college. <laughs> I'm going to go write one. <laughs> And uh, it took me like three some years because I used to type it on an old, you remember like old type? Oh, yeah, yeah. With a... <laughs> like, I, didn't even, I couldn't even do this. I had to go like. <laughs> Literally henpecked it. And so when the book, I, I printed it up. I printed it up for like $8 a pop at the local print shop because I didn't know how to print up books and all that yep. stuff. And here I am trying to sell it for 10 I print it for 8 like $2. Like, <laughs> they help you to $2,000 a month in, uh, in a while. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and so um, somebody said something to me. Here's, here's how it was. I have a friend. Uh, he's, he might be known by some people. His name is Joe Theismann. He used to quarterback the Washington Redskins at the time. Now the Washington football team. <laughs> Joe was speaking in Palm Springs. This was 1995, I think it was. And uh, I asked, I went to see him speak and I asked him, I said, Hey, did they pay you to speak out here? And he goes, yeah. And Doug, I didn't know anything about speaking, right? And I said, would they pay you to speak, like $50 or something? And he's like, no, $10,000. This was back in 1995. I mean, Joe's like, oh, yeah. now, right? And I about fell off my chair. I was like, what? Like, they paid you $10,000 for that 45-minute motivational talk? I was, I was just beside me. I didn't understand. Like, I had no idea. And Joe was the first person who started explaining the speaking world to me. And then... Uh, he looked at my book stuff I had because he was going to give me an endorsement for my book. And this was a big deal back then because he was on Monday Night Football and a big yep. football star. And and uh, he says, you know, you really ought to be speaking at colleges on the topic of the book. And I don't know why, but stuff like that always sticks with me. And it's just like clicks. And, and so I went out, long story short, and learned everything I could about how do you get booked and more importantly, paid to speak at colleges because when I was at the time, I was just driving around doing free talks because I didn't know anything yeah. <laughs> like <fucking> talks. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I did about 70 or 80 of those for free before I ever found out that there are groups that actually pay you to speak. And man, once I figured that out and I got my first paid check, which I think was uh, $2,500, yeah, $2,500, Nickel State University in Thibodeau, Louisiana. And I just could not believe there. Somebody was paying me to talk. And here I am thinking, wait a minute. I wanted to make $2,000 a month and I'd be set for life. And I just did $2,500 for an hour talk. And I literally, I mean, I started drinking the coffee, buddy. I said, how many puppies can I book? Yeah. Right? I went out and the first year I didn't do too hot because I didn't know anything about marketing or how to like find the people. And, and I did, I don't know, a few talks here and there. But then when I really figured out the key to fee paid speaking, which is you have to get to the people who have the budgets and get them to pick you and get them to pay you. Uh, the next year I did hundred plus talks. And then the year after that, hundred plus talks. And when I was just cranking it, I was doing 150 paid talks a year. So that's how I got started. It just was purely by accident. I found out I loved it. You know, I, got, I loved it when people came up and said, man, you helped me and you changed my life. Or like, even to this day, this is crazy. 20 some years later, I'll, I'll, see somebody who comes up who bought my $10 college book back in college and they still have it from wow. five years ago and they tell me it helped them get their job and I'm thinking wow this is so cool so that that's kind of how I got the whole speaking thing going well first of all I thank you for sharing and thank you for <laughs> writing a book oh, it's uh, the green screen's not letting me see it here <laughs> oh yeah uh, so i have i i have you there you go there it goes now you can see it yeah there you go paid to speak at colleges and um it's super helpful book like it, it really does help like really unpack and go okay oh that's how you do it that's who to talk to and yeah these are the topics that, that are booked and yep 
you know, because it's it, you have to. I always say this in anything you want to do. It doesn't have to be speaking, but the easiest way to convert in anything is find out what your who your prospect is, who your buyer is. Find out what they want, and then hand it to them exactly how they want it. So, when it comes to speaking at colleges, find out who the coordinators are. The top. 20, I think it's, what is it, uh, 17 different coordinators roughly at every college and university who has a budget. So find out who the 17 are and then find out which topics they book. Make sure your topic fits under one of those categories. There's like 21 categories of what they book, right? Not what you think they need, but what they book. Right. And get in front of them and let them know, hey, I got what you want for your students or faculty. And I'm delivering it to you, the person who's the decision maker. And that's really all I did. There was no magic into it. It's I just got it in front of people. For our speaker friends who are interested in in going out and doing that, um, I would hallucinate that sometimes it's it, a, a huge part of that is making sure that the title is appropriate and you, uh, you, you can fit your content to almost any title within reason. You know, hundred percent right. And, and that's a big distinction because I think sometimes may, people may not realize that they have expertise that they could modify their title just a little bit that is going to still deliver incredible, you know, it's still in alignment. Yeah, so check this out. I did a, I, I believe one of the most important talks I do is how to network your way to success. I mean, look, we're networking right here, you and I, right? When we met the first time, we're, not, we're building relationship, right? But isn't that funny how it's never taught in any college or university? Why isn't there a class on this? I don't you know? know. Yeah. Something we use every day of our lives for the rest of our lives, internationally, throughout social media or live in person. And yet no one teaches this in college, but I had to take classes on like statistics. Like what the hell is a statistic? Like I never use that thing, <laughs> like, the formula. But you know what I use every day? communication skills, relationship building skills, right? And it just drives me nuts. It's never taught. So back when I was starting, I said, man, I'm going to teach students how to build and maintain quality relationships. And this is key, ready? Because they need this. And here's the thing that I quickly learned. Yeah, they need it, but it wasn't one of the categories that coordinators are used to booking. So I used to try to book that talk because it was so important. I'd be so passionate talking to these event coordinators they would never, maybe one time a year, I would get one booking, maybe. And then when I learned, okay, wait a minute, I got to think like them. And networking is not one of the, although very important, not one of the categories they book, but you know what is booked? Career. So if I change my title, how to network your way to your first job out of college, now I fit in the career category and it's crazy to start getting booked left and right. I still showed up and talked on what I wanted to talk about, yep. networking, but I had to retitle it and relanguage it so that when they saw it, they go, oh, this is a perfect match for what we want. So you're 100% right what you just said prior to this. Yeah, thank you. It's, I mean, it's an important distinction because I think sometimes people get too bogged down into like that how thing and, and instead of just going, no, you already have it. Like you don't yeah. have to be re reinventing the wheel, just put it on a plate that looks appetizing. I say, look, if you, if you want to hand me a birthday present, but you wrap it in Christmas paper, <laughs> it's the same present, but I don't receive it the same way. Right, yeah. And that's what we're doing with our titles and our descriptions. We have to wrap it in the right paper so that when the coordinator, and it doesn't just have to be colleges, it could be corporations, associations, yeah. youth, whatever that is. When that particular coordinator sees it, they go, oh my gosh, thank you. This is so perfect. I'm so glad that this showed up to me. Versus, well, what is it? It doesn't look like, see, it doesn't matter what's in the paper. If the paper, if the wrapping isn't correct, the title isn't correct, the description isn't correct, then the, the person receives it incorrectly. Amen. And and that definitely taints or uh, influences the experience. Yeah. 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 Now let's let's like take a second example. I saw that you had one of my buddies on. He was a coaching member of mine, Craig Doeswell. Yes. Ago. Uh -huh. Yeah. Well, Craig got his start in my boot camp. He actually came to my boot camp to meet a guy, Robert Finkelstein, who's in the music industry. Robert happened to be attending my event. This was 12, 15 years ago, I think. And he's listening. He's in the back listening about how to do this speaking thing. And he's like, what? It seems to say, 
reaction I had when I first learned the speaking industry. I'm like, what? You get paid to do this? And he was he was just waiting in the back for us to break to go to so he'd go to lunch with his friend. And so he never heard anything like this. Wow, I could get paid to speak. And so he actually turned around, signed up at the table. Then he ended up becoming one of my coaching clients. And he came to my house. And when he was, when he came to my house, he had this whole vision of doing uh, marketing your business on a shoestring budget. And I said, and he was calling himself America's shoestring budget coach. And I said, well, there's a problem with that. You're going to attract people who have no money. <laughs> <laughs> And so uh, then at my house and in my mastermind, that's when the whole idea for Rockstar System for Success was born, how to become uh, the expert in your industry by marketing like rock stars do. And, and so that just took off like crazy because that appealed to people. Yep. Like people understood it versus I don't want to market my, even if I, I want to save money, but I don't want, want to market my business on a shoestring budget. And those who do do that don't have no money. <laughs> Well, so I love that. And, and Craig was amazing. And, and it's so interesting, like our histories awesome. are so like similar, like both from Long Island, New York and Long Island. My, oh, I wow. have, yeah, my first career was in music, worked on multiple Grammy winning records. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. Toured the country. Um, I like won Grammys with Celine Dion and J-Lo. Oh, wow. and, yeah. And so like, I had no idea. Oh yeah. It's, it's so like, I, I need to be better. Like my, my whole rock star thing is, is, you know, kind of similar, but that that's how I, I just grew up. That's um, awesome. So, so some advice then, so here's a little mindset shift because I, I see this a lot in people in the, this world being so saturated yeah. as well. Yeah. And you know, what you just pointed out is, is your brilliance in not only um, finding a way to capitalize on the right market, like not people with a shoestring budget, right. and as well as finding, you know, Craig's unique value, his unique presence is, you know, all of that. What's, what's true to him, like right. yours, your brand, your position is true to you. It has to be true to you. Oh, of course. Yeah. Uh, so how do you help people kind of get around fi or, or find that what's true to them uh, have that ownership and not get locked into the the whole like oh the world is you know it's a saturated market yeah. or yeah. you know and to still be authentic. Yeah, great, great question because it's actually the first thing I do with every single one of my coaching clients. And now over the years I've done uh, we stopped adding, but I've done over two I have two thousand video testimonials up on YouTube oh. from people who I've consulted for. So I know I've done at least two thousand one on one consulting at least <laughs> probably twenty two hundred now since we you know, been doing the Zooms the last five or six months as well. Yeah. But, um, and I tell this, this same thing, okay? Literally, this is the first thing I do with every client. And so anybody watching, please take this to heart because this is literally millions of dollars worth of consulting here, okay? You, first of all, stop thinking like you need a brand, okay? I, I, I know more about branding than most branding people, branding experts. I've hired branding experts, brought them to my house, Right. When I was going on the Secret Millionaire TV show, I hired a branding expert guy, you know, big guy who you know, branded all these big companies, right? I brought him to my house, sat him in my conference room, and it was a three-day branding thing. I think I invested 20-some grand with him for the three days, which was totally fine. I'm, I'm always paying for people's knowledge, right? Mm -hmm. uh, after day one, I said, look, with all due respect, I appreciate you, buddy, but uh, keep the money, but we don't need you back for day two and three because it's a complete waste of our time. Wow. That's why I say that, because every single branding person you ever meet starts with you. Hey, what are your values? What are your goals? What's important to you? And anybody knows anything about any business or marketing knows you never start with yourself or your business, your product, your service, or your company. You start with the market and the prospect. Right. right? Find out what that buyer, your ideal prospect wants, take your great stuff, package it and deliver it in a way they want it. Okay. So what I say is nobody needs a brand. What you and I need, Doug, and anybody watching needs a unique and right positioning. Okay. And here's what I mean. Most people have an unlevel seesaw. They might have something where, yeah, this is unique for the market I'm going after, but that's not right because it's not really me and true to who I am or it'll be this way. Yeah, that's me. 
but nobody's going to want to find out how to find fairies in the woods. Nobody cares about that. Right? So what I say is you need a unique, so you stand out from your competitors, but also it's something that the uh, prospect wants to buy. And if we're going after speaking, meeting planners, but it has to be true, right, and authentic to you because you're going to live with this, right? right? And once we figure that out, this is amazing. We stamp that everywhere. And that becomes all of your packaging. So that becomes your book title. That becomes your name of your presentation. If you're doing a coaching program, that's the name of your coaching program. We just stamp that unique and right positioning everywhere and everything matches all the same pictures, all the same colors, all the same languaging, same fonts. And then here's what happens, brother. All of a sudden people look at you and go, oh my gosh, what an amazing brand you have. But we don't start off looking, trying to create a brand because you all you, you start to create from yourself and you don't buy from yourself. We have to create from the prospect, the market's point of view. Mm. And, and so that's, that's the first step I do with everybody. There are people who I literally have taken who have no buyers whatsoever. And it's real easy to figure it out. It's because everything's about them and no one would buy that because nobody cares about it. Right. And start thinking like the prospect and the buyer and we re-engineer and put different wrapping paper on it. It's amazing how like people just now seek them out. So you can literally switch it. If you always, if I could give everybody one, if you said, James, what's one tip, you can only give one, you know, and, and you're, you're on an Island and you're going to give everybody one tip and then you're going to leave the Island and that's it. You can only give one. What would it be? And I would say this, no matter what business you're in, what product or service, I don't care if you're selling widgets, you're selling coaching, you're speaking. Here's the tip. Never create and think like yourself. Always create from the buyer's point of view and think from their point of view. That would be my one big major tip. Beautiful. So to go down that path a little bit, how does one actually do that? Like, how can you put yourself in that spot, like to get meta on another perspective? Well, I'll tell you how I did it when I started out, you know, because uh, I mean, the, the fast answer now is I literally say, just hire somebody who knows what they're doing, like hire somebody like me, literally a guy signed up yesterday, $100,000 program I have for me to figure all this stuff out for. Him. But when I started out, and I didn't have money. I didn't have two cents to like invest in somebody who knew this. I don't think anybody even knew this back then. It's just the way I started thinking. Here's what I would highly suggest. Cause here's what I did. I started with coordinators, college coordinators. I literally picked up the phone and I started to call. Uh, I think I called about 30 different college coordinators. And here's what I said to them. So when I first started marketing the colleges, I got zero response, zero bookings. Like, so I figured, okay, my revelation was I'm the only common denominator here. So something must be wrong. <laughs> right? These hundred or so people I'm marketing to, nobody is interested. It can't be them. <laughs> <laughs> so I literally opened up a directory and I just dialed up people and I would call them up and I would say, Hey, I'm sorry to interrupt you. My name is James Malinchak. I know you don't know who I am. And I'm so sorry for taking up your time. If you don't have any time, uh, no problem. But if I could have two to three minutes and just ask you a couple of questions, I'm brand, I just want to be straight and honest. I'm brand new getting started as a speaker. And honestly, I don't have a clue what I'm doing. <laughs> right? And they always appreciated that, that I was up front and they always talked to me. I'd say probably 25 of them said, yeah, I'll give you a couple minutes right now. And the other five were like, well, how about call them back on Wednesday? Right. And every one of them were super nice. And I, here's what I said. I don't know what I'm doing. Okay. But I have a passion to help kids. Could you tell me just a couple of things? Number one, what topics do you most book for your students and why? And number two, how should somebody like me market to you? And Doug, here's the thing. When they told me, guess what I did? Here's my brilliance. Ready? I walked away and did exactly what they told me to do. <laughs> Yeah, and so that's what I would suggest today. First, figure out your prospect, who your market, your niche is, and literally email or reach out through social media or pick up the phone. I like to talk to people on the phone because you know you, you hear what they say and then it spins off to this idea and that idea. And so literally pick up the phone, email, social media, message a couple people and just ask them, hey, 
Um, you seem to fit my demographic. If I were to market to you, what is it that you would want in a digital course? Or what is it you would want in a, in a speaker presentation or topic? Or if I were to throw my own virtual uh, summit or my own live one-day event, two-day event, three-day event, what topic would you want to hear in order to make you want to come to it? Or what challenge are you having that you would want help with? And then I would go through but me, I did 30 when I was starting out. I don't know why 30, but you get a good, pretty decent litmus, litmus test when you do about 30 folks. So I would look, once I get those answers in, I'd look for patterns. And you know what's going to happen? You're going to see a couple things consistently pop up more than others. Mm-hmm. That's probably what people want. So you probably should start focusing your positioning around that as long as it's equal seesaw and it's right for you. I mean, it can't be completely out of left field, right? Right. Well, it can't be, yeah, you know, people want this, but man, it has nothing to do with my background, my passion, et cetera. But that's how I would start today if I were starting, especially on a shoestring budget. Right. Well, and so with technology, when you started out, I'm sure, you know, like emailing and social media clearly wasn't uh, as sure. available. Right. Um, have you noticed um, and, and how have you shifted as well as you started to incorporate those? Because sometimes, you know, hey, this strategy worked well, things have changed, you know, we have to adjust. How have you adjusted? Brother, I'm so glad you asked that because I still have the secret sauce that nobody else has because everybody else gets jacked up by other forms of getting the word out. And here's what I mean. Okay. So first of all, if you, let's just take speaking, you have to divide speaking into two different worlds over here, this side and this side. This side would be public events. So like my Big Money Speaker Boot Camp is a public event. Anybody could attend. If you throw an event, you know, of breaking through limiting beliefs and you're renting out a hotel, anybody can sign up and come to it, right? You're doing an online, virtual, anybody can come to it. So that's public, okay? Over here, you have fee-paid speaking. And primarily, there are three major markets when it comes to checks being paid. There's corporations and associations. There are colleges and universities, and then there's K through 12. Now, you could say, but what about entrepreneur groups? Entrepreneur groups are over here. Mm. Anybody can register and come to one of those entrepreneur seminars. Yep. Okay. So two separate ones. You got it first. Everybody's got to understand that because everybody loves speaking in together and does, does the same. The way I go after these public events over here where I'm not going to be paid a fee, most people in public events, unless you're a celebrity, aren't going to be paid a fee. The reason celebs are paid, Gary V, Marcus Lamon is from the, you know, a profit. Um, if you're looking at an entrepreneur events, mm-hmm. uh, Canfield, right? Uh, Cardone, they're all being paid a fee. And you know why? Because they are Shamu. Right. right? Shamu gets people out to the park. Yep. But, but that's not where the park makes the money because there's so much <laughs> for Shamu. <laughs> Virgin food. Yeah. Yeah. So, however, people go to the parks to see the Shamus, but then where they, or see what makes the money is the well on the stick, the cotton candy, the tea, the back of the room sells, if you think about it, right? Right. So over here, this is fee paid speaking where you can't be doing offers and things like that. So, so first you got to decide who you're going after. You're going after public events where you're most likely not going to be paid. So therefore, you then have to have topics that would be relevant for those types of public events. Then you have to know how to speak and offer to convert sales. Or you're going to go over here in this side of speaking where you're not going to sell anything and you're just going to be paid a fee to show up and speak. Mm -hmm. I came from the fee paid world and then came over here and started teaching folks how I did all that. Okay, And that's the number one mistake I see is people lump it all together. Mm-hmm. And so I'll give you a real life example. So Jack Canfield, mm-hmm. chicken soup is a love Jack. One of my dear friends for 25 years, been to a ton of his seminars. And over the last 10 plus years, I've kind of helped him and his team with their business side. So over here in the public seminar world, Jack teaches law of attraction. Okay, it's one of his topics. At his own live events, he can do whatever he wants on law of attraction. He can move the chairs out. He can put a strobe light in. He can have people sitting on maps, you know, doing their meditations, right? But over here in the fee pay world, you better not try to do any of that. 
because there's, let's take a corporation, there's political correctness, board, shareholders, board of directors, different religious beliefs. You can't do that in that world. So if Jack tries to market law of attraction in the fee pay world, never gets booked. Yeah. If he changes the packaging, the wrapping to the success principles, and one of the principles he teaches is not law of attraction, but it is like attracts like, you become who you hang around, which is essentially the same thing, yeah. but it's the languaging. Now he gets booked for high fees over here. I mean, he's 70 grand to speak over here. See, so in the public world, you could do whatever you like, right? Because anybody can register. In the fee paid world, you've got to really understand to make sure that you're coming from their point of view, what they want, and you're not mixing kind of the esoteric stuff into promoting in a way where they can't book that stuff. Right. You know, and it's very important, very important. So on, on that uh, tip, as it were, um, how do you approach? So I guess the college speaking and the, those are all pretty much the, the same thing. So corporate speaking, you're just looking for the, the decision makers for each of those. Yeah. And the thing about let me inject something. There's different topics that they book for each one of those. So like what they book for K through 12, they don't book that stuff for colleges and universities and the college and university talks very, with the exception of like leadership. They're not booking that for corporations and associations. So you've got to know within each of the fee paid niches, you got to know what those coordinators in that niche book, right? You can't just say, well, I'm going to go talk on motivation because watch this. Let's say you want to get paid fees for K through 12 which a lot of folks say, ah, talking to kids, there's no, I've walked out of youth events with 30, $40,000. Because right? you know the budgets and you know how to, to do it and what they're looking for. They don't really book motivation. You know what they book for? Go for your dreams. So if you don't slightly wrap it differently as a go for your dreams or how to be a great leader, there's a lot of student leadership events out there, right? If you said, well, I'm going to go speak to kids on change, well, no one's going to book you. But if you rewrapped it into a dream, go for your dreams or, you know, how to be an awesome student leader, now you get booked, okay? But go for your dreams doesn't usually get booked for corporate fee-paid gigs. They want mo motivation, success, peak performance, right? Which is weird, right? Because you say, well, it's all the same. Well, no, you, I get it. You and I get like, yeah, it's kind of all the same, but doesn't matter what we think. It matters what the event coordinators think and how they are looking for that topic. So those slight, so you don't, even though that's we're over here on fee paid speaking, you have different parts of fee paid. You got to appeal to that part and what that, that coordinator wants. Right. Well, and, and look, I, I know you teach all these in your events and, and stuff. So you're just, I know you're just giving the tip of the iceberg on a lot of this. So I, I really appreciate your, your yeah, uh, absolutely. honesty um, for when it comes to marketing to let's start with with that and then we can move over into the you know doing our own events kind of thing i i find sometimes uh even when i was starting out there was a, a little bit of that mind shift of concern over a no one knows who i am and is that going to you know because we see the big names out there and all that <laughs> so there's that that factor of how can i stand out or compete with a james malincheck or a james you know, canfield or, or what have you then what's the right fee to start with because if it's too low i'm not taken seriously but if i'm too high they're going to be like who the hell are you asking for 70 grand just because jack gets it like <laughs> You know, so how do you balance that? And then what do you pr promote? Like, what do you present them with? Is it a one sheet? Uh, how important is your yeah. reel? And like, where? and I know you go so deep into that into your trainings, but if you can like give us a little, yeah. you know, sort of. Yeah, so let me jump back because I just realized I didn't fully answer your previous question. Yeah. My secret sauce, if you will, oh, yes. is I, I found out from coordinators years ago that the number one way, and I'm talking corporations, Colleges, universities, K through 12, you know, the number one way they like to be marketed to overwhelmingly consensus. Well, the very first way is that they saw you somewhere and they, that's, that's a given, but let's take that out of it. And if you were just trying to approach people coldly, you know, the best way to do it, and this is what they have told me over and to this day, they still tell me because I have event coordinators that I'm constant, who I speak for, who I constantly survey over and over and over. And I will tell you, from me doing it, I know it works. 
is a six page brochure in the mail. Now here, I know it's somebody watching this, we're on Facebook Live and I know it's somebody's gonna say, oh, it's social media today, oh, it's email. No, it's not, no, it's not. You've gotten seduced by the internet to believe that, that there's no cost in doing it. So guess what? Nobody mails to these coordinators. So when you show up in their mailbox, and as long as everything on there speaks directly to them, like we've been talking about, right? What they want, you know what you do? You make their job easier. They look at it, they touch it, and they probably go check you out online, okay? Whereas they don't open their emails all the time. A lot of them have spam blockers. Mm-hmm. You're not even making it through. And I, you damn well ain't reaching a fee-paid event coordinator trying to run Facebook ads. And they ain't hanging out on Instagram watching your TikTok video. <laughs> that ain't the way it works, right? Yeah. And so the only other, the only way I would try to do it through social media, which I still wouldn't do because nothing beats the brochure showing up in their mailbox because it's one stamp. It's right. one first-class stamp. I've been booked for $40,000 gigs off of a stamp on a brochure because it looks perfect for them. They look at it and they go, man, this looks perfect for our event coming up in six months. And they give me a call or shoot me an email. We talk more and boom, the deal's done. Right? No video, nothing. Right. But I would say the only uh, platform social media wise would be LinkedIn and, you know, reaching out to event coordinators, et cetera. But that's a lot of time. Right. And, and you could go buy a list of coordinators for colleges and universities, K through 12, or corporations and associations, and you can narrow it down. If you want coordinators who run companies that have 50 plus employees that do $100 million a year, the CEO jumps rope on Tuesdays, you know, he eats green M&Ms and he plays golf on Sundays and he watches reruns of the Kardashians, you can find those people. Simply by going to a list company. Now, I'll give the, one of the list companies we always suggest that, that we like to use is Info USA. Info USA. Well, list companies are in business to actually get a list of people you want. Yep. Seriously, if you want somebody who eats green M&Ms who you know, has this as his logo, yep. <laughs> who lives in South Florida, who jumps rope on Tuesdays and plays jacks on Thursdays, they'll find them. That's their business, right? And so check this out, Doug. If you're an event coordinator, brother, and I come across your mailbox, I know you're going to look at my stuff as long as long. Oh, sorry. We got some massive lightning going on here. (laughs) As long as it looks good and it matches what you're going, you're looking for, it's the best way. You have TOMA, T-O-M-A, top of mind awareness, because you have zero competition because nobody mails anymore. Nobody. And a little, uh, I'm, I'm sure you, you, I don't know if this is uh, giving away too much for you or if this is part of your training, but what if you put it in like a, a hot pink envelope or, you know, something to have- Definitely could. More. But here's the great thing. And I don't have one hand here. I'd show you my six page brochure. Um, it's in my garage. I don't want to jump off the Zoom, but you don't even need to. You can, but you don't have to incur that extra cost Mm -hmm. because if you just do a self-mailer the right way, remember, we want to save money. If you do a self-mailer that's folded down, it's like, you know, it's roughly about this big. Yeah. It costs one stamp. That's the key. We want to keep it to one first class stamp, right? So we don't want the the postage weight to go up. We don't want more stuff added in because now you're going to push it over a dollar. You're going to double it up and there's no reason we have to. Right. Remember, I listen to the coordinators. Right. They say, just send me like a four or five, six page brochure in the mail. When I figured this out, I've been even over here on my boot camp, do you realize that like, people are like, how do you get 700 people to your event? It's like, well, I send out 50,000 mail pieces to speakers, authors, trainers, coaches, consultants. Right. It's not hard. If I have the right messaging on there, going to the right people, and I'm mailing 50,000 of those in the mail. It ain't hard to get five, six, seven hundred people to register. Right. And you know, I ask this all the time. I tell, I ask folks, I said, how many other speaker trainings have you ever gotten a mail piece from? I'm like, nobody. I'm like, exactly. That's why I mail. I have zero competition. <laughs> so I'm a, so to answer your question from a while ago, you know, 10 minutes ago, my secret sauce and what, when I teach my students, it's amazing. Like they're like, they have the same resistance. Like really mailing. Isn't that old? Shouldn't we pivot? 
shouldn't we change them? And then when I walk them through, if you mail out 10,000 emails, you know, over what's, what's deliverability rates today, 10% maybe on the very generous high end. That means your list of 10,000, you don't have a list of 10,000, you have a list of a thousand, mm -hmm. right? And it's actually more like six, 7%, but let's just say 10, that's a thousand. How many of them then are actually getting opened? Mm -hmm. Generous and say 50%, right? So that means five, that means you have a list of 500 people, not a list of 10,000 people. Right. Right. If, if, if I go get a list of 10,000 mailing addresses, by the way, these list companies, they're in business also to make sure those are updated current mailing addresses because they're running it through the uh, NCOS through uh, the postal service in DC. And it's like, so Doug, if I had your mailing address and you moved three times, if I ran it myself through NCOS, I don't care how many times you move, I got your current address. Right. It's updated, right? So let's say, I mail out, I got a list of mailing addresses of 10,000. Let's say only 95% are going to make it through because nothing's 100%, but but it's not 50% like over here, right? 10% well, like over here. It's going to be at least 95% because the mailing addresses are always current, right? And so of those 9,500, so let me ask you, would you rather 1,000 emails make it through or 9,500 show up? To right. some of course. Yeah. Right. No and let's say 50% of those are looked at. That's 4,500 roughly. Let's say 4,250. Right. Over here, if you have a thousand that go out and 50% get looked at, you get 500. Would you rather have 500 eyeballs looking at your stuff who have budgets or would you rather have 4,250 people who have budgets? Right. If 10% booked you over here, that's five. Right. No, it's 50. I'm sorry. It's 50. If 10% booked you over here, that's 400, 425 talks. If your fee is $10,000 over here, you just made $4 million. If your fee is a 10,000 over here, you made 500 grand. I mean, so just do the, when I walk them through this, they're like, wow, I never thought about sent, focusing only on social media or emails is, is making me lose money because most of those aren't being delivered or looked at. People don't look at it like this. They look at direct mail as an expense. But if you do it the right way and you're showing up to the right people with the right messaging and the addresses are current and you have zero competition because nobody else is mailing, you win many times just by default because you're the only one. Yeah, who one. Up. So. And what kind of like should someone starting out like look at, uh, you know, testing um, that, like how many, like, are they, do you buy in bulk? Yeah. I always say like a thousand. Okay. Yeah. Ask, my litmus test is a thousand. Okay. Uh, but I'm telling you, if you're, if you're getting the right people, see the, I always say the, you know, there's this old line, the money's in the list. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's certainly for email. But it's definitely the same for direct mail. If you have a real, if you put time into getting a really good list, right? If I have a thousand people who run events who I know have the budgets, because remember, when you work with a list company, they can go find, like, I want people who've been, who run events of 200 people or more who, on average, pay, have a speaker budget of anywhere from, you know, 20000 to $300,000 because they can cover my little $10,000 fee or my fifteen or my whatever your fee is, right? And uh, they, they've been doing events for X number of years. They have been putting on X number of events per year. I mean, I, I'm showing up to somebody who has a budget who's serious about this. Mm-hmm. And I made their job, you make their job easier when you show up in their mailbox because how do most event coordinators go look for, for speakers? They go to Google and type in a speaker. Well, you know this, the only people who win are people who are manipulating keywords that come up. Yeah. So the many, coordinator- Do the coordinators do that still? Are they are they uh, searching or is it, do they have well, some people reaching out to them anyway? Yeah, so watch, here's how this happens. The first, think about an event coordinator. They're not savvy marketers like you and I, right? They, they're running like all aspects of the event. They're getting the awards, they're getting the, excursions for the incentive trip for the sales people who won they're doing the food they're, they're doing everything the last thing they have time to do is sit there and play around all day on google trying to find speakers right. right but what happens is that's usually the first thought let's go to google right and the second thought is let's go to youtube 
Well, you know that if they type in something, you know, motivational speaker, they're getting whoever pops up who's doing the S or is doing the keyboard. So they're not finding people they really want. So they get freaking frustrated and say, I'll get to this later because I got 15 other things I got to do for the event coming up next spring. Then all of a sudden, here comes Doug across their desk in their mailbox. You just made their job easier. As long as everything on there is written the right way, he just made their job easier. And I can't tell you, Doug, how many times over the last 20 years, how many talks I have gotten because I showed up in their mailbox and I made their job easier. Everything was correct on the, the marketing piece. Mm-hmm. And I literally won because nobody else showed up in the mailbox. <laughs> I can't tell. So like in Las Vegas, I used to market forever to all the conventions coming to Vegas. And I had a headline on my brochure. that says national speaker and author lives in Las Vegas. Why even consider the added expense to fly in a speaker for your next Las Vegas event? Guess what? You know who that's getting mailed to? Only people who have events booked in Las Vegas over the next five years. Yep. So I'm speaking directly to them. Right. And then the rest of the brochure talks about how you say it because I don't have to travel, no airfare, no hotel expense, no, you know, so I'm speaking their language. And so here you are, you're sitting there and you're like, you're reading this and you go, oh my gosh, we have an event in March in Las Vegas. This guy lives in Las Vegas. We can save all this money if we book him. I mean, he looks like a decent speaker, even though I'd never heard of him before. Right. Let's go check out his website or let's send him an email or let's, let's call him up and you know, talk to him a little bit and see if he'd be a right fit. I can't tell you how many times that's happened. That, hundreds and hundreds of times. Because the key is the stuff on the brochure has to speak directly to them. Well, I mean, I have so many questions. I, I don't want to thank you. I don't oh, want hang to on a second. I, let, me, uh, let me just check my time here. Yep. I have uh, actually six minutes because in seven minutes I got another uh, Zoom I got to jump on. Oh, okay. Uh, so maybe we'll follow up on this. I'd love to, some of these are even just personal questions. So two things, and then uh, one, what you just shared, and, and this is uh, important, um, is the balance of credibility versus the, oh. you know, the what's in it for me. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. How does the one balance that when they're, you know, they're going, hey, look at all the things I've done. This is why you want to hire me. Like, yeah. what is the best way to position that? Well, let me tell you, okay, that's great, because you asked that earlier about the somebody new starting out, credibility, yeah. that sort of thing, right? I didn't know this back then. I thought, I thought they would book me because of who I am, right? And what, remember, I started out, I didn't have any. There was no who I am, because I didn't have any who. Yeah. <laughs> right? you know, um, and I thought they would. And what I've come to learn is they care less and less about you and they care more about, this is one of my hidden secrets, why I get booked over others. They care more about how, what, what's going to happen for my people after your talk is finished. Because mm. they're looking for results. Now, if, you're, if they're going after a, a Shamu, if they're bringing you know, Bill Clinton in, they're bringing Clinton in because it's Clinton. They don't really care what he's going to say. <laughs> you know, they're bringing him in because everybody's going to get a picture with him, and they're right. going to Oh, I'm going to the event to see Clinton. I'm fired up. And, but they don't really care what, what he, but if they're going to bring somebody in on a topic to try to help their people, whether it's motivation or sales or, you know, breaking through limiting, whatever that is, right. They care about one thing. How are my people going to be better after the speaker is done? So what you want to do in your marketing piece is speak that language. It has nothing to do with if you've been on all these talk shows or if you wrote two books, or if you've done zero talks or 500 talks, all they want to know is, will my people be better? Whatever that topic is that they're looking for and you're going to present, will my people be better when the speaker shuts up and is done? That's all they care about. They want a result. So if you're talking on leadership, are my people going to be better leaders for our organization? Or my students going to be better leaders on their campus? when the speaker's done. Took me a long time, brother, to figure that one out because I used to think it was all about, I got to talk about, you know, my experience and my background. And, you know, that's not what they're looking for when they're looking to hire a speaker. That stuff supports it, right? So, but here, here's, let me give a starting out tip because I used to do this starting out. Okay, so if I was starting today, first of all, everything on there would be talking about 
what they want after the speaker finishes. That would be rule number one. Second rule, and let's say whatever your topic is, let's say you decided after checking out the uh, topics that you could talk on leadership, and that's one that they want, okay? First thing would be in your leadership, first rule, in the leadership talk, when that leadership talk is done, here's what will happen for your people. That's how the whole brochure would be written, okay? Second thing, I would have a book cover designed. Notice I didn't say a book written. A book cover designed that you are writing that's on the topic of leadership because now that helps to add to the credibility of you speaking on leadership. And mm -hmm. if the book cover, it would say coming soon. So you don't have to actually write a book. A lot of people think, well, I have to go do a book in order to be an expert on the topic. And I'm like, no, you don't. Let's just create a book cover and put it on your marketing piece and put coming soon. I did that when I was starting out and I had a book that was coming soon for five years. <laughs> <laughs> and then eventually I got around. Straight. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I can't tell you how that like people, and here's what was crazy. You know what made me end up writing the book? I marketed my brochure out as me as a leadership speaker had the, um, Here's what will happen. It was in the college market. Here's what will happen for your students after my leadership talk is done. And check this out. Guy who booked me for three talks called me up and said, you know, we're going to have about 500 students at each of the three talks. We're doing one in Chicago, one in New York, and one in Las Vegas. We're going to book you for all three off the brochure. I think at the time my fee was like 5,000, 4,500 bucks. So it's like, you know, $15,000 trio, if you will. And then he said this. And he said, and I saw your leadership book. I'd like to buy 1,500 copies so we can give them to all the students at each of the event, 500 per event. And I said, my, my buddy, I'd love to sell them to you, right? And so I said, one thing, though, in order to reserve, I don't know why I said this, in order to reserve the books, we need a 50% down payment for the books. And he's like, yeah, no problem. So he sent me off a check. I got the check. I now had money to actually print the book. <laughs> so I sat down and wrote the book, <laughs> right? printed it up, and I had those books. That's how I got my book done. But for like five years prior to that, I just had a book cover that said coming soon. Well, and that's brilliant. And I, and I want to like also share that, that we teach that now in, in course development, sell the course, and then build it. 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%. And I, I literally just put that book cover on there so I could be more creditable, if you will, on the topic, right? And so there's a way starting out you could do it. All I say is put coming soon or soon to be released mm -hmm. you know, under it. And soon to be released for you could be five years from now when you finally get the time to write it. <laughs> right. Or the other thing is you can use transcriptions and, and yeah. use, so there's so many ways that people like yeah. don't even think about on how they yeah. can get that done. Yeah, that's actually what I started to do for books after that is when I would deliver one of the talks live, I would now date myself. I went to Radio Shock and I bought a tape recorder. Yeah. I have no clue what a tape recorder is. <laughs> it's a little belt recorder with a little microphone. And literally, I put in a 60-minute tape and hit record as I did my talk. And then I had that transcribed and that became my book. I cleaned it up and then that became my next book. Yeah. <laughs> so. Oh, love it. Um, well, look, dude, I know you say you got to go at uh, 3.30. How can, yes. we get in, how can we get in touch with you? What are the best ways so people can learn more, get on board, and, and uh, bask in your glory? That's nice, buddy. Uh, real easy. You can go to www.bigmoneyspeaker.com, bigmoneyspeaker.com, or you just reach out through, um, you know, let's see, we're live on Facebook, so through Facebook or LinkedIn. You know, that's the... Uh, Best way, what those two social media platforms. I'm on Instagram and all okay. that. I have people that do that for me. I don't actually do Instagram or Twitter. And all that. <laughs> I'm booking talks, man. I don't have time to do that. I'm talking to event coordinators. <laughs> right. <laughs> Love it. Well, dude, thank you so much for the right. incredible, you know, bits of of you know breakthrough knowledge. Uh, I'm I'm it's just so helpful for all of not not only myself but of course everyone who's uh, looking to break through in in the speaking world. Um, I look forward to seeing you soon. Hopefully, when things clear up, we can yeah. uh, we can get together. And I look forward to just totally. digging in deeper with everything that you're doing because you are uh, you are brilliant. And uh, I look forward to more. Awesome. Thanks, you, bro brother. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate what you do. You got it, man. You rock. See you in a bit. You too. <laughs> hey, brother. <laughs> 
thank you so much for stopping by and hanging with us and remember to subscribe wherever you listen to your podcast right here and we look forward to serving you even more remember download your free guided hypnotic meditation at guidedhypnotic.com that's guidedhypnotic.com where you'll get your free anxiety busting meditation we look forward to serving you, and if you have any questions, comments, please feel free to reach out. All right, we love you for who you are and who you aren't. God bless.